Thanks for joining me again as we look back at another great classic film. This is another fabulous 50s sci-fi film tapping into the familiar subgenre of visitors or invaders from other worlds, but this time employing an unusual twist. It doesn't rely heavily on special effects, instead focusing on great storytelling that ultimately asks us to turn the microscope onto ourselves. It is The Day the Earth Stood Still from 1951. Producer Julian uh, Blaustein set out to make a film which illustrated the fear and suspicion that characterised the early Cold War and Atomic Age. He reviewed more than 200 works of science fiction before deciding to use Harry Bates's 1940 short story Farewell to the Master, which was originally published in the pop magazine Astounding Science Fiction. Under working titles Farewell to the Master and Journey to the World, Edmund North wrote the screenplay with science fiction uh, writer Raymond F. Jones working as an uncredited advisor. North was a former army officer whose scripts was a response to the alarming proliferation of nuclear weapons at the time. North also created the alien language used in the film, including the iconic phrase Klaatu Barada Nikto, which he translated as, there's hope for Earth if the scientists can be reached. The famous phrase is considered a safe word which will deactivate the robot Gort should he mistakenly employ deadly force. The idea that machines designed to protect us do the opposite has become a staple of science fiction. Director Robert Wise was attract attracted to the project because of its overt anti-military stance and because he believed in UFOs. Wise wanted the film to appear as realistic as, and believable as possible, uh, to push the message of avoiding armed conflict. The film's pacifist international uh, cooperation message was out of sync with the Cold War era and over the decades the film has become regarded as ahead of its time. Spencer Tracy and Claude Rains were considered for the part of Klaatu by studio head Daryl F. Zanuck. Rains wanted to accept the part, but declined because of a prior Broadway commitment. Robert Wise talked Zanuck out of casting Tracy by reminding him how audiences would react to one of the world's most recognisable actors playing an alien. Zanuck eventually recommended Michael Rennie because he was generally unknown and would be more readily accepted in the part. This turned out to be the only lead role that, that Rennie was ever given. Anne Baxter was originally cast in the role of Helen Benson, but the role went instead to Patricia Neal. Zanuck suggested Jack Palance for the role of Gort, but the role went to Locke Martin, the doorman at Grauman's Chinese Theatre. Uh, Martin was cast because he was well over two metres tall. Sam Jaffe, who was cast as Professor Barnhart, had an engineering degree and had taught mathematics before becoming an actor, which gave him the, a good background for his character. The studio wanted to re replace Jaffe because of his liberal politics, uh, their fear of the anti-communist uh, witch hunts and the possibility of blacklisting. Producer Julian Blaustein kept Jaffe on. Elmer Davis, H.V. Kaltenbaum, uh, Drew Pearson and uh, Gabrielle Heater were top broadcast journalists in the 1950s and their cameo roles in uh, increased the film's sense of reality. The film censor was nervous about the portrayal of Klaatu as Christ-like, with his powers of uh, resurrection, his coming to earth with a message for all mankind, and his pseudonym of John Carpenter. Christ was a carpenter, John was one of his disciples, and the initials JC were reportedly intentional parallels created by the uh, writer. The set was designed by Thomas uh, Little and uh, Claude Carpenter in, collab in collaboration with architect Frank Lloyd Wright, with the spacecraft inspired by Wright's Johnson Wax headquarters. It was made of wood, wire and plaster of Paris. Locke Martin was not a physically strong man and was unable to carry Patricia Neal, so had to be aided by wires and in some shots carries a lightweight dummy. He had difficulty with the hot and heavy Gort suit and could only stay in it for half an hour at a time, with these segments edited together in the final print. In addition, a fiberglass statue was made for shots in which the robot was stationary, and a large bust of the robot's head with a remote control visor was used when Gort fires his death ray. Principal outdoor photography took place on the 20th Century Fox sound stages and on its uh, studio backlot, with the second unit shooting background and other scenes in Washington and at, at Fort Meade. The US Department of Defense refused to participate in the film after reading the script, but allowed the use of their vehicles and equipment which were operated by members of the National Guard. Doubles were used for Klaatu and Bobby in long shots of them walking around Washington as none of the principal cast ever went there, with the scenes of Klaatu and Bobby at the Lincoln Memorial and Arlington Cemetery shot using repro reprojection. The seamlessness of the spaceship was achieved by filling the crack around the door with putty and painting over it. When the door opened, the putty was torn apart, making the door seem to simply appear. The seamless closing of the ship and its ramp was achieved running the same footage in reverse. Crowds were made up of local government employees, including some from the FBI. 
The music score by Bernard Herrmann included unusual instruments such as electric violin, cello and bass, uh, two theremin uh, electronic instruments, two Hammond organs, a Wurlitzer organ, three vibraphones, two glockenspiels, a marimba, a tam-tam, two bass drums, three sets of timpani, uh, two pianos, a celesta, two harps, one horn, three trumpets, three trombones and four uh, tubers as well as experimental overdubbing and tape reversal techniques. This gave the score an otherworldly feel that was perfect for the film. Variety praised the film's documentary style. Harrison's report said it was by far the best science uh, fiction picture yet produced and holds your interest from start to finish. The Los Angeles Times praised the film's seriousness. They also found certain subversive elements. Overseas, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association gave the filmmakers a special Golden Globe Award for promoting international understanding. Bernard Herrmann's score was nominated for a Golden Globe. The French magazine Cahiers de Cinema was impressed with its moral relativism and called it almost literally stunning. On release, it took $3.7 million at the domestic box office, making it the year's 52nd biggest earner. The phrase Klaatu Barado Nikto has appeared repeatedly in fiction and in popular culture. The Robot Hall of Fame describes it as one of the most famous commands in science fiction, and Frederick S. Clarke of Cinema uh, Fantastique uh, calls it the most famous phrase ever spoken by an extraterrestrial. After The Thing From Another World, uh, this was the second big, big budget science fiction uh, feature film released by a major American studio since Just Imagine in 1930. The film was dramatised for Lux Radio Theatre in January of 54, with Michael Rennie again playing Klaatu and Gene Peters playing uh, Helen Benson. This was later rebroadcast on the Hollywood Radio Theatre, which aired on the Armed uh, Forces Radio Service. It was selected for preservation in the US National Film Registry. The American Film Institute has included it on its list of America's most heart-pounding films, most inspiring films, best film scores, and it is the fifth best film in the science fiction genre. The New York Times lists it as one of the best 1,000 movies ever made. It is now considered one of the best films released in 1951 and is on Arthur C. Clarke's list of the 12 best science fiction films of all time. It is one of the 1001 movies you must see before you die. It was remade in 2008 starring Keanu Reeves, but that film was nowhere near as good as the original. So lots of good reasons to watch this particular film. It tells a really compelling uh, cautionary tale about war and nuclear proliferation. The black and white photography combined with the, inno uh, the innovative film score is stunning, and the pseudo documentary style with its no-name casting is compelling. So what I recommend you do is that you go to our website, find our virtual screenings page, find the link to this particular film, click on and watch it. As always, see what you think. We'd love you to come back, share your thoughts about the film, and let us know if you'd recommend the film for others as well. And then we're back in the not-too-distant future for our next classic films review. Catch you next time.